Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about when not to use TypeScript. So let's get into it. Basically the subscriber question here is, uh, well, so I caught a comment on the comment section where the question basically was what, because uh, this person wanted to see the because there is a lot of hype around uh, on about TypeScript these days and this person just wanted to get a feel for when to use it and when not to use it. And this is something that kind of touches on something that I think is a little bit sad. And the thing that I think is sad about this is basically that it's... Uh, the question isn't sad, it's more that we've gotten to a point where the IT industry is so saturated with tools and options and things like this that we it, well, it gets kind of hard for people to figure out what's relevant and what's not relevant. It's something that is, I mean, it's a problem we have in the shampoo industry and the same problem exists in the protein powder industry. Everybody promises you the same thing. Everybody has the same, so the, your, the, like the solution to your problems. All of them do, right? And it's just the fact, the, the thing is that it's just not true for IT, in IT a lot of the time. Sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not true. And in this scenario, it's not true. If you look at the adoption rate of TypeScript, it should, it's fairly high. I mean, some people will make an argument for other solutions like Flow as an example. And although this has a certain level of relevancy, it's not in the same dimension as the adoption that TypeScript has seen. I mean, in the last report, this year's report, 2019's report, the popularity of TypeScript went up seven positions. It puts it over some of the like the more traditional languages for backend development, as an example. And the popularity keeps on growing. It has support for almost every library you can imagine. So, and there's continuously improvement, continuously improvements in adding on, being added on to it. But to ask when not to use it, it, and basically the reason for the question is, you know, that it's unsure, like when is it useful, when it's not useful, is it, to me, like it's kind of, we missed the mark here with this person. We need to, we, we need to explain what makes TypeScript a useful thing in order for us to explain when it's a useful, like when do we want to use it and when don't we, or when do we not necessarily want to use it. So basically, I'm going to try to kill off a few assumptions people have about types. So the benefit that TypeScript gives that no other solution is giving right now is that it allows it will allow you to add a type system to JavaScript without mutating like doing a vast uh, change or creating a change into the language itself. In other words, you can write like anything that is JavaScript is legal TypeScript. It's a superset of JavaScript which allows you to type things. That's that's basically the whole benefit. And adding types to a loosely typed language in this fashion with the compiler and all that good stuff is an immensely powerful thing because when you grow your size, the size of your project to a point where it's very hard for you to figure out what's going on all the time because some components or some pieces of code that you create will have been written by you and some will have been written by some other person somewhere else and as the product grows you have people who have built on top of each other's work and there's not always a perfect match especially when it's not when it's a loosely typed language between the different people's so like different people's solutions, and that basically it leads to legacy. It leads to misunderstandings. It leads to the classic you've probably seen it many times, where someone passes in some value that isn't supposed to go into a specific function in React land. I, one of the most common things is that you see people like in the log output that there's a warning that oh you're passing in a string, but it should have been this or it should have been a number or things like that. These are the sorts of things that happen when you don't have a typing system because there is no, like the person consuming your interfaces or updating your interfaces, they don't actually know that there is a path in the code that leads to a value that isn't supposed to be passed in that is now being passed in, right? So those are the benefits. 
But now let's flip that. So, okay, so when isn't that a useful thing? Well, the opposite, like the, the, the inverse of this would be, okay, so if you don't have a large scaling code base, and that is basically the answer right there. TypeScript is, I mean, even at a, in a small project, TypeScript is useful to a point. Having types in general is a useful thing, but the main benefit, as I said, is that you can scale a project up to a fairly large size without much fuss or worry and without much consideration to the sort of issues that come when you have a loosely typed language, right? But that might get in your way because a lot of people who are naysayers to types have this, like, they really do have this issue, they have an issue with expressing everything as a type because it is more restrictive to have a type system, I won't lie. That restriction is a very useful thing when you're working on a large code base, but it might not may not be a very useful thing if you're working on some, I don't know, small piece of script that's gonna go on a static web page, or if you're working on a product that is going to stay very small, it's not really all that useful. So my rule of thumb here is if you're if you can measure your entire code base or like you foresee that the code that you are writing won't ever go beyond maybe a few hundred lines of code so that it's possible for one single person to keep it in their heads, you won't gain much from adding TypeScript. There are some nice to haves that you will gain from the editors, like you you know simple resolution and things like that will be much simpler for editors such as Visual Studio Code, but it's not going to give you that really big benefit. So if you don't like TypeScript or you feel that there's a, you don't want to deal with the hassle of adding more dependencies to your stack and using a type system, then if you have a small project, for sure, don't use it. There's no point in it because, as I said, the, you know, the benefits come when you start having it, when you get a product that is measured in several thousands of lines of code and you have several people working on it together. So what I want you to take away from this is that in general, TypeScript is a very good thing to add to any serious project, I would say, but there are absolutely instances where it may not be so useful to you. And those instances are usually you're going to do something that is either very short lived a temporary script that's going to run like a migration job or a, like a s s small script that's going to do something trivial or a small static website or blog or something like that where you're not actually going to have more than one contributor most likely or that you're not going to measure your code in more than a few hundred lines of code then there is no no reason for you to add typescript if you don't want to that's at least how i think about it have a great day